Hey everybody, Ron Bielefeld, Whistling Wings Photography, back with you again. Today we're going to talk about the new Canon RF 100-500 uh, telephoto zoom lens. And uh, this might be a little bit longer video because there's quite a bit, I think, to talk about here. And uh, of course, we're going to start out with the most important thing, right? And some of you may turn this off right after this because you'll hear me say that it's a great lens. It is. It's a great lens. And I'll cut to the chase. I would buy it again. And if you're looking for a lens in the 100 to 500 zoom range uh, for the RF mount, um, then I recommend you buy it because the main things that we're worried about here, sharpness, detail, autofocus response, uh, image stabilization, all those things are, are really, really great. Uh, just, to, just to sum it up really quickly. The lens had a little bit of an issue when I first got it. Uh, there was a firmware update that Canon just put out, 1.1.1. Uh, so Canon's put out two firmware updates for the R5 already and they've both made the camera better and the 1.1.1 1.1 point yeah 1.1 <laughs> firmware update uh, was specifically to get at an issue that a lot of people quote unquote were experiencing with the 100 to 500 on the R5 and that had to do with the IS IBIS uh, in, internal um, body image stabilization system from what I could tell the issues I was having mostly in mode 2 IS mode 2 uh, had to do I think with how the lens and the IBIS the IS and the lens and the IBIS and the body were communicating they were off a little bit or something because you get some really unstable things going on for me it seemed like mostly in in mode 2 now with this new firmware update uh, this thing is rock solid it seems like maybe it's improved the autofocus even a little bit, uh, keeping on subjects that are against close, dirty backgrounds, uh, close behind the subject, that is. Seems to be better even, but I'll tell you, the autofocus has been great. And some of those issues, maybe, uh, with autofocus had to do probably if people were in certain auto, uh, IS modes and things like that, that that instability was causing you know the, the autofocus to have trouble uh, staying on a target or on a subject as well. So... Uh, with the new firmware update, this this camera and lens combination now the 100 to 500 is just uh, amazing. It really is. And so you know we can go through some pictures uh, in the video here. It's not the greatest way to look at you know detail and sharpness and stuff of images that you get with a lens. And so I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description of this video uh, down below where you can actually go to the images and take a look at them in a, in a lot more critical fashion than just here on the video. But I wanted to scroll through some images. Some of these are of, of, uh, of birds. Some of them are uh, of other things. Uh, just basically playing around with the lens, trying to uh, see what it could do. And so there's a lot of different things in here uh, as far as images go. I'll also have some video clips down below because shooting video handheld, right? And all of these images were taken handheld, okay? And the video that, the few video clips that I'll include were taken handheld as well. And so you can see that, you know, the video, there's nothing fancy about this, but you can handhold 500 millimeter video and it looks pretty darn smooth. And then, of course, in post, you can do some stabilization beyond, beyond in-camera stabilization. So really, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to using you know, this combination uh, for video. I only do short clips. I'm not a, a video person. I don't make you know, productions or anything like that. But I do like to take some video to back up some of my imagery and, and things. So I'm really looking forward to, to using uh, this combination, the 100 to 500 on the R5 for uh, video as well now that the stabilization is is just amazing so let's go over uh, in more detail uh, my likes and then my dislikes because there are a couple things i don't particularly like about this lens first all of the above right that i just talked about are, are in the likes category uh, the sharpness it's an l lens right it's a canon l lens it's a zoom um, and you know we always 
you know, at least a lot of people I know that were, you know, professionals or, or, or big into to taking wildlife uh, images, you know, we always gravitated in the past towards prime lenses because that's where you got your, your, your sharpness, right? And then, of course, speed, you know, F4s and stuff like that uh, were, were important. Um, and so in order to get the best image quality, we went to these, these really expensive prime lenses. The lenses Canon and other manufacturers really are coming out with now, the zoom lenses, these 1 to 400 uh, Mark II that Canon has and the EF mount is just spectacular. Of course, they're 200 to 400 with the built-in teleconverter, right? That, that thing is amazing as far as sharpness, detail, all that autofocus, all that kind of stuff. Uh, this lens is right up there with it, right? You can almost not see a difference anymore between you know, the quality of the images you're getting from these zoom lenses and these, these really expensive primes that we used to all shoot and still do shoot. I, I love my 600 F4, but it's big, right? It's bulky. It's heavy. I got the Mark II. I don't have the Mark III. Uh, hopefully, Canon will come out with a 600 F4. DO, maybe, for the RF mount coming up. Nice and light, small, relatively speaking. But anyway, uh, the 1 to 500, you know, the sharpness, the detail, it's really, really spectacular. And uh, no artifact, you know, chromatic aberrate. There's just really nothing there, you know, to, to worry about. Uh, autofocus response on this lens with the R5 is is quick, right? It's not super snappy like if you're used to shooting a 1DX2 or now a 1DX3, you know, with all that voltage going, driving the servos, the focusing servo. You know, if you're out of focus and it just snaps into focus, almost blink of an eye, right? This is a little slower than that in acquisition if you're way out of focus and coming into focus. But once you've got the subject in focus and you're tracking with this lens, I mean, it's, it's, it's super fast. And birds coming right at me, right? Gaining on the camera quickly. Uh, it keeps up. You know, Canon, I, I will admit, I shot, I've shot Canon for a long, long time. And one thing that Canon cameras and lenses, the combos, didn't do very well, I don't think, was subjects like birds gaining on the camera quickly. It just had a hard time keeping the bird in focus. Not anymore. And this lens is right up there with it. The IS, IBIS combination now, six plus stops of stabilization, I, yes. I think that's, that's actually absolutely the case now, especially with the firmware update I've already talked about. So, I mean, it's, it's amazingly stable. Um, so that's a like, you know, it's, 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 it's probably the most stable 500 millimeters I've ever shot when it's all the way out at 500 millimeters. Uh, so, you know, I love it. I love it. I love all those things about it. It's light, right? That's another, another thing that I really like about the lens. It's almost not there, which is kind of a trend now, right? The build of these things, the, the casings that they're using, the, the internals on this stuff are getting smaller, lighter. Everything's getting lighter. It's, it's really light, right? Uh, I like that the tripod uh, foot will come off if you, if you want uh, that kind of flexibility, it'll do that. So I won't take it off now, but anyway, it comes off, which is really, really nice. Uh, so lots to like about uh, this lens. I, I, would I buy it again? Absolutely. Uh, and so, you know, I've been having a lot of fun with it. Some things I don't like, okay, uh, about the lens. Well, the first thing is that it's a 7.1 at, at 500 millimeters. That's not really a dislike. It's just, you know, Sony came out with their 2 to 6. I shot Sony a little bit there for a while, and they came out with that 2 to 6 at 6.3 at 600 millimeters. And yes, it's a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier than this lens, but boy, that, you know, that little bit quicker at 600, right, versus 7.1 at 500 here, man, it would have been nice if Canon could have made it just a little bit faster at the 500 millimeter mark. That way, if you put a teleconverter on here, you're staying, you know, more in the quick range rather than getting into that slow range of aperture. But that being said, the ISO on this camera and the noise ratio, right, is really good. The, uh, the dynamic range on this camera, the image you get is really good. Best I've seen from, from a Canon sensor, really. It's just the, the, the images are a joy to look at and a joy to work with in post-processing. But anyway, because of that, you know, you can shoot a little bit higher, um, a little bit slower lenses, so you're going to shoot a little bit higher ISOs or whatever under the conditions, 
and it's still working. It's working well for me. So it's a little bit of a bummer, but but it's really not, I guess, into the dislike category. It's just more something I, I would have hoped or wished for. Um, one thing I don't particularly like about this camera is the throw for zooming, right? You're zooming 400 millimeters, one to five, right? Uh, it's a long way. And so when you're shooting and you're trying and, and you're zooming in to go the whole range is, is tough, right? I'm all the way out and a bird's coming at me and I'm trying to stay with it, zooming in. I'm, I'm having to, I'm having to reposition my hand, which is again, not something you can't get used to, but I'm going to make, an, make the comparison again to the 200 to 600 that Sony came out with. You could basically do it with your thumb, the way the, the lens was set up. It didn't extend like this one. It was internal zooming. So you could basically just go the entire 400 millimeter range, two to six, just with your thumb without having to reposition your hand. For action type photography, that can be really, really important. Uh, will I get used to this? Yes, I'm already getting used to it, but the throw, just so you know, is really, really long. Okay, it's long. But again, you know, we'll get used to it, and it's, it's something that you can deal with. Um, the other thing about this zooming on this is it, it's smooth. It's very smooth. And of course, it has a tensioning ring that you can tighten it up, make it really hard to move, right? Or you can loosen it all the way down and make it to the smooth setting. They call it tight and smooth. Uh, and then it is smoother, but you'll notice you can't, it won't, when it's on the smooth setting, it won't extend by itself. I kind of wish it would because it's a little stiff, okay, even at the smooth setting. When you have to move it so far to zoom the entire range, having it looser and even smoother than it is at, on the smooth setting would be nice. It probably will loosen up over time. I hope it will. Now some of you will say, well, you know, you've got that camouflage on the barrel that goes inside when you're zooming uh, in and out. Does that, did that make it tighter? No, it didn't. It was exactly the same feel before I put this on and, uh, and now after it's on there. So that had no bearing on, on this at all. Uh, so that's a, a little bit of a dislike, right? Is, the, is that smoothness, um, you know, that, that isn't really super slick when it's on the loose setting. So, you know, it's again, just a feel. And if you're, you know, it's not something that's, that's a fatal problem with the lens at all. It's, it's just a personal thing. And, and a lot of these things I'm talking about and always talk about are personal things. But for me, uh, that was the, the, you know, one of the things that, that kind of struck me. But in the end, that's really it as far as quote unquote dislikes with this lens. Uh, it really, really is um, a great lens. And so you know, moving, you know, down to talking about more specific things about uh, how this camera performs and things you might want to consider when you're shooting this. Uh, again, I'm a bird, bird photographer, a wildlife photographer, bird in flight, bird action uh, photography is really what, what, I'm, what I'm after when I'm in the field most of the time. So things like IS settings, right, image stabilization settings on this, cam on this camera and lens now you got to kind of say camera and lens, right? Because they work, they're working together. And so the thing about this lens, like a lot of the newer lenses that Canon has, is that it has three stabilization modes, one, two, and three. Hard to see on the video, I know. I'll put an insert in, hopefully uh, a picture, and so you'll be able to see it uh, you know, more closely. And when this lens is connected to the R5, this is how you control IBIS as well. It's all, it's all integrated, right? There's no menu item that you could like turn IBIS off and just use the IS of the lens, right? That would be kind of neat, I think, um, especially when there were some of these issues that I was seeing with mode two and now that's basically been taken care of with the firmware. I was thinking, well, let me, can I turn IBIS off and just use the internal uh, IS of the lens in 1, 2, and 3 like we used to before Canon put IBIS in, in these new mirrorless cameras. Well, you can't do that. If you put a lens on that doesn't have IS built into it, a menu item pops up, right? And you can do some things with, 
with IBIS then. You can turn it on and off and stuff like that, I think. I, if I remember correctly, that's, that's kind of what you have available to you is on and off. The weird thing that Canon did is that they, they take the item away. It doesn't even appear in the menus when you have a, an IS lens attached to, to the camera. So you kind of forget even where that, where that menu item is because you don't see it all the time when you're going through the menus, which I think is kind of an odd thing. They could have just grayed it out. But anyway, back to stabilizer modes one, two, and three. Uh, what I've learned is pay attention to them, okay? We're talking about a lot of IS, a lot of image stabilization potency here, okay? Six stops plus, right? So if you're on mode one and you're trying to pan with moving subjects, a flying bird, for example, it's going to be difficult because that camera in mode one, the camera and the lens working together now, are trying to stabilize that movement in all axes, right? In all axes. It's gonna mess up your images a lot of times. You're gonna see some funky blurs in there. You might not even be able to stay on a bird panning and you're wondering what the heck's going on. If all of a sudden it looks like you've lost your ability to pan with birds, like magically just lost that ability, right? Look at your IS setting, your image stabilization setting. I bet you it's on one. Okay, we all do it, right? I mean, you get in, you get in, you're, you're shooting a static stuff, you know, a perched bird or whatever, and then all of a sudden here comes a flying bird, you don't switch it from one. You had it in one for the static stuff. That's what mode one is for, right? Static subjects, more or less. Perched birds, things like that, where you want image stabilization in all axes, right? And especially if it's early in the morning, late in the evening, and it's really dark, and we'll get into that. Uh, there's an image that I took that I'll show you at a very slow shutter speed on mode one, and you, you'll be amazed. Anyway, mode one is for static. Pay attention. Mode two for panning, right? Panning in one direction or the other, but not big time movements from one plane to another, right? Horizontal plane to vertical plane. This thing's sensing which way you're moving and it's stabilizing in the opposite plane, right? And then all of a sudden you go up, it's not gonna adjust really quickly, okay? So I've seen some things with owls. They're flying like this and then they swoop up to land. They do that a lot. And when you do that, all of a sudden you'll see this weird blur in some of those images before it realizes or can change the plane that it's, that it's compensating for. So, Two would be great for like air shows and things like that, where things are basically horizontal or vertical uh, panning and not a lot of jerking around or changing planes quickly in how you're panning. Mode three, of course, as has been the case for, for a while now with these lenses with three modes, is that you've got something that really doesn't affect or take effect the image stabilization until you start taking pictures, right? Until the, shutter, until the shutter starts going off. So I really like mode three. I stay in mode three a lot because I'm going from static birds perched to flying, from flying to landing, and very, you know, instantaneous kind of things. And you don't have time to change the mode setting on the lens. Well, this lens is so strong, like I said, with how it can stabilize things that you want to make sure you're in the right setting or you will get some images that are going to look funky. They're going to get blurred in weird, in weird ways. And it's not because you're not tracking right or that the shutter speed is too slow or anything like that. It's just the image stabilization system now, the in-body and the lens, you know, is, is trying to stabilize things in a direction uh, that, that uh, you know, it thinks it needs to. And if you're on the wrong settings, then, you know, you're going to get some weird, weird blurs because elements of the lens are moving, the sensor is now moving, maybe in the wrong direction to the movement uh, of the subject or of your movements. So I would say pay attention to these settings and make sure you're in the right, right one. Otherwise, you might get some weird stuff going on. As far as uh, closeness, you know, another setting, of course, is the, the close, the, the distance with which you can get focus on something, right? You've got the full, and then you've got an infinity, infinity setting. So you've got two settings. Um, this lens can focus really, really close. I'm not, at, even at 500 millimeters, I'm not sure exactly what it is, I don't remember, um, but it's really close. And so I've really kept it on full. I've never, I've never had to, you know, um, had a want to really switch it to the infinity setting I can get the really close to really far away, 
uh, no problem. The, the distance that the lens travels when it's trying to focus, if you miss focus, is fast enough. It's not so much to where it's going to cycle so slowly that when it has to go the full range that it's a problem. I just kept it on full. And that way you've got your full range uh, from distant to as close as possible. So when you get that bird again gaining on you or you got a fox trotting right at you or something like that, they can get really, really close. So I, you know, I just keep it on full. I keep the, um, you know, the focusing distance on full. Uh, autofocus versus manual, right? Standard stuff. I'm almost always on autofocus. I don't do a whole lot of manual focusing for my birds, birds in flight, stuff like that. So, and it does have the built-in uh, action ring up near the, the mount, which I love. I love this thing. I have it set for, for um, choosing my autofocus methods. The thing I like about the rings on these lenses and even the adapter, I have the adapter that has the ring for the EF mount lenses that I have, is that it's so close up to the body, right? Well, you can, you'd think that, well, that can be hard to, to get to, right? Well, yeah, I, I don't know if I would put something on there that I need to get to fast, uh, like shutter or something like that, shutter speed or, or aperture. But I like it because it's out of the way, you do, and it doesn't get bumped by accident, and I won't turn it by accident. So you actually have to physically want to do it for it to really get done. And so I put autofocus method on here rather than hitting the autofocus uh, button and then scrolling with the multifunction button. That's, that's the default for the R5, right? I switched it to, to this ring and I love it because I can just go and when you're looking through the viewfinder or if you're looking at the LCD screen and you're, and you're moving this, uh, clicking through the, the methods, they, they show up. You can see the boxes, you know, for, for focusing, changing, so you know what you're on without even looking at the readout, uh, the actual description of, of what focus method you're using. So anyway, I love, I love the, the, the action ring. I think that's a great, great addition. Uh, so I don't really know what else I can, can say about the 100 to 500 other than I think it's nice that they went instead of a 1 to 4 to a 1 to 5. Would I have liked a two to six better uh, rather than a one to five? Yeah, for me, I would have. Uh, that 600 millimeter mark is really nice for birds, birds in flight, wildlife in general, for me, for what I do. And uh, so I would have loved if camera would have come out with a lens that directly competed with Sony's 200 to 600 because I absolutely love that lens, right? But they didn't. They came out with the 1 to 5, and I love it. It's a great lens. It stays, it stands right next to all the great lenses that Canon's been coming out with uh, for a while now. Uh, so uh, take a look at the images. Go to the link uh, down below. Take a look at the images. Take a look at the video clips. Again, they're, they're not meant to be anything special. They're just meant to give you a chance to, to judge for yourself what the lens can do. And uh, find the one, I have one in there of a carving of a bird rather than an actual bird. Uh, and the reason I did that, I, I went outside, when you're trying to, at least for me, when I'm trying to gauge how IS works, image stabilization works, how well it works, and now with IBIS in the camera, I, wanted, I, I was trying to eliminate bird movement, right? I could have tried to do it with a real bird, but then getting the bird to sit still because that's not judging IS, you know. I wanted to shoot very, very slow shutter speeds um, and just eliminate the bird movement and really hone in on camera movement to see how well it did. And you can find the uh, carved bird picture in there. That was taken at 1 15th of a second, 1 15th of a second, ISO 100, right? And uh, at F7.1, I believe. And it's sharp. And it wasn't the only image that I got sharp at those types of settings, right? You can do it. You can handhold at 500 millimeters, right? That, that image was taken at uh, very, very slow shutter speeds if you have some decent technique. And so, you know, this, this carved bird picture, um, I, I used full mechanical shutter, first curtain electronic shutter, and then full electronic. Now, the first curtain... Uh, electronic trying to keep the shutter shock down that's one reason why you, you would pick that um, shutter mode and in all three I was able to get 
really sharp images of this bird, this carved bird, static bird, handheld at 500 millimeters. So uh, it, it really gives you a range to work with here uh, that, you know, up until this time, you really just couldn't, you couldn't do it, you know, unless you were the most steady person on the planet hand holding these high focal lengths. So anyway, um, I'm, I'm loving it. And that rolls over, like I said, to the video. There's some video clips of some ducks swimming that you can see is pretty darn smooth for handheld, right? So if you can't work with that, I, I think I can work with it pretty, pretty well, you know? And so I'm really, I'm really thrilled. And so I'll be keeping this lens on this camera a lot. Um, I'm hoping to get another R5 because I like it so much, uh, especially now with the firmware updates. And I'll probably keep the one to 500 on one of the R5s. And on my other R5, I'll put my 600 F4, probably with a teleconverter. Uh, you'll notice I didn't talk about a 1.4 on the, on the 100 to 500. I'll do another video on using teleconverters on this lens, both the 1.4 and the two times. Uh, just too much. I don't like to have these videos be too long. Um, so too much to, to cover in, in this video, uh, but that video is coming. And it changes things, obviously. And so we'll go into to what I found uh, for my style of photography uh, at another time. So until next time, uh, get out there, take some pictures, uh, be safe, and we'll see you soon.